and welcome to our new kitchen! We moved to another, to a new apartment. Uh, well, sounding so excited about it. We used to have a... What's that called? We used to not have a first-hand lease, I guess. Uh, and now we're leasing directly from the hiring flat com apartment company. Uh, I don't know English, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, but we have a, another kitchen. It's almost the, about the same size of the, as the old kitchen. And uh, we have actually less equipment. <laughs> uh, which brings me to this video. Because... I really wanted to follow up on the vegan cheeses and make the ultimate vegan cheese, which is a vegan stretchy mozzarella. I really wanted to make a vegan stretchy mozzarella. I had a recipe all lined up. I have all the weird things that go in goes into it, like psyllium husk. And today I was going to do that and we were going to put it on pizza, which is why over here... I have a lovely tomato sauce bubbling and okay bubbling over great uh, but now we're going to have to make pizza without that vegan mozzarella and just use normal mozzarella oh no so sad <laughs> we still get pizza though so uh, who cares and because we don't have any type of blender and to make make this vegan mozzarella you need to mix a uh, soaked so <laughs> You need to mix soaked cashew nuts in a blender. Ooh. That was a really close bird. He, he was really close. He? Yeah, I think so. He. I wish I knew more about birds. I can't make a vegan mozzarella today because we don't have a blender. But today, I'm just going to make some bread. Or actually, I'm going to make bread today, tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow, because I'm making a sourdough bread. Uh, this is something that I like to do about every week or so. I started making sourdough breads September last year, uh, and it took me a long time to get it right. Like, the sourdough starter has been going very well from the beginning. Right now, it's more bubbly than ever. The last bread I made was kind of crazy, actually. In like sour, it was crazy like sourdough bread world. But like my first 10 breads or 15 breads were quite awful, actually, to be honest. Uh, and only quite recently did my bread start becoming good. Uh, I don't know why <laughs> they suddenly became good. We'll see how this bread turns out. Uh, so this isn't a guide or a tutorial. I just felt like maybe you could follow along while I make sourdough bread. This very cute, right? I don't want to take it down even though it's an Easter decoration because I think that's very, very nice. It also makes this kitchen more lively. What do you think about this? Like, it's kind of a fun setup. We're trying a more, a different angle because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. And um, because otherwise there's not really a point with this whole thing. So I put my phone on a bottle of balsamic vinegar and I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to put things in here. So what I'm going to do first, right? I'll show you. Here is my starter. Pop that open. It's kind of thick, uh, a bit bubbly, kind of bubbly honestly. I fed it. Uh, with some flour and water uh, a few days ago. It smells really sour and also kind of alcoholy actually, which is a thing that I was kind of scared of at first. It yeast produces an alcohol, ethanol, when it uh, digests sugars. It also creates carbon dioxide, which is why we use it in baking. So what I normally do, this is going to look messy, I, I'm very messy when I do this actually. I feel like this is thicker than usually. Uh, I'm very imprecise. Oh wait, now you're, now you can see a real fun. Yeah, that's some nice yeast work. <laughs> I like to take blob, 
of this and honestly I feel like more is less <laughs> which isn't something people normally say now but most recipes I've tried following a lot of recipes so a, a lot of I use a lot of techniques from recipes and videos about sourdough bread making when I bake bread but I don't normally like follow one recipe to a tea and most recipes usually call for just a little blob of sourdough starter but I feel like I have all of this beautiful starter and I still have a lot left and if this gives me extra rising power I want it uh, so now I'm going to add some water I'm just going to dissolve this like you would yeast actually uh, when baking uh, it's some lukewarm water this is also the thing right I don't really measure or weigh my water at this point tomorrow I'm going to be way more exact with what I do when you normally feed your starter right you take like maybe a tablespoon of water and a tablespoon of uh, flour but this is like you take a, a small part of or well in my case like half of your starter and then you mega feed it and then it gets really psyched about that and you can and it starts rising a lot and now i'm adding some flour just straight from the bag um, and what i'm looking for is just a consistency it's not as i said not specific measurements it's just a consistency Ooh. <laughs> You started shaking there. <laughs> and I want a bit more flour. I almost want it to come into a bowl. Bowl? To come into a bowl. <laughs> you can just see me spilling everywhere. I'm a very messy baker and cook. And oh, I did it again. It's crazy to me how this lump of fl yes, flour and water and obviously yeasts from the air um, can become a really oh, I need to stop doing that can become a really delicious bread I think that's just insane and I think that's about a good consistency for me I put the lid on the container and it goes into the fridge overnight I, re I realized uh, that I did a bit of an oopsie yesterday. Uh, I put the, what did I call it? The boosted starter, uh, the dough we made yesterday, into the fridge. Uh, there's nothing wrong with doing that, it's just, it takes a bit longer time, so I'm happy I did this overnight. But now I've put it in my very, I think, exceptionally warm cupboard over the fridge and now we're going to do something uh, that I don't really know why we're doing <laughs> honestly to be honest uh, it's about gluten development my personal interpretation of baking a bread is you want a good balance between rising yeast activity and gluten development which is the structural element there can be lots of gas and rising but if you don't have a structure that holds the dough up it'll still just collapse and become a flat pancake and this happened to me a lot in the beginning so what i've done to my what i've added to my bread baking process is mainly just uh, gluten developing steps what we're doing now is i'm we're doing oh it has a name i don't know the name of it i'm putting all of the flour and water together that i want to use in my dough uh, but about an hour before i put in the starter and the actual sourdough and this helps gluten development apparently <laughs> and now i've actually brought out my scale i feel like i found quite a good place to play to put the camera actually how do you feel please tell me um so what i do is i like to put I like to put, I put about 400 grams of flour. Right, I'm doing different flours. Ooh, this has flour. Okay, I want about 400 grams of flour total. All of these flours together should be 400 grams. And then 
water uh, to taste. I was about to say not to taste, but until you, I get the right texture. So very not helpful for you. It really depends on the flour you use. Uh, and I do mostly just normal flour. In Sweden we don't really have flour, which I know they do in a lot of other, other countries. So we have the normal white flour, wheat flour, I don't know. Today I'm doing 250 of the regular flour. And then we have, uh, what we call this, it's Grahans Mjöl. Uh, I think it's whole wheat for you, if you're English speaking. A hundred of this. Another thing that really helped me make better breads is just having a scale, actually. It's when I tried to do this by... With, when I didn't own a scale. It's way harder to, do, to get the correct measurements because water and flour doesn't have the same density and different flours don't have the same density or water holding capacity. So it's very... And then I'm doing about 50, 50 of... Oh, sorry. Of rye flour. Uh, I wish I had a more finely milled dry flour, but I don't, which is why I'm not adding... Oh, 400 on the dot. <laughs> Who's that? Possessed by my diary. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've got me a good spatula. And now I'm going to add water. This is way too much water, so we're going to... <laughs> of course everything goes to shift when I'm doing this on here. Okay, so less water. <laughs> you should add less water than 400 milliliters. Uh, at least if you're using these flowers. Right now the dough looks like this. You don't want this. This is way too thin. It's like a, almost like a thick pancake batter. So I'm adding more just regular wheat flour. This is more what I'm looking for. I think I'm done now. Um, like this. And now I let this sit for about an hour. <clears throat> We're back. It's been about an hour. I've added a shirt to this great look I'm sporting today with quarantine fashion. And this boosted starter, it was I made it quite thick and doughy. And as you can see, it's very loose now. And that's usually what happens to sourdough in fermentation, for some reason. <laughs> some reason that I don't know. I'm going to put you so you can see better what I'm doing. I'm kind of worried today that this hasn't risen as much as it should, uh, because I put it in the fridge and it's also not super bubbly. We'll see though. Uh, if this bread becomes a total failure, then we can learn from that together. Uh, I'm still going to post this <laughs> because it's fun. And this is what I normally do with bread. So if something goes wrong today, then I know that it's me putting this in the fridge properly. That's the problem, you know? It's a way to learn. Uh, now we have our <laughs> starter. Top of the dough. Like so. I'm going to add just a little more water and then use a technique that I learned uh, when watching uh, Binging with Bandage video. He and a guy called Joshua Wiseman uh, made sourdough bread. And a lot of my techniques are actually from that video. And it's a great video. If you like this, you should come watch it. Come watch it, you should watch it. So you kind of dimple, you want to incorporate these two things together, right? So you, <laughs> this looks gross, but use your fingers and like, and then you dimple it like that. It looks disgusting, but it feels great. And when you've kind of incorporated it a bit, you can start to listen to those beautiful, beautiful noises uh, to pick it up like this. <laughs> this is not a technique I have perfected yet. I, li <laughs> I like to think I'm going to be very good at this one day. I just pick, you pick, but what I learned is that you pick the dough up when your hand is like a hook. <laughs> what is it? Man of hook, hand, door, car. And then you go like this. 
with the dough to incorporate them and to get gluten and air. You want air in your dough actually. And I don't really know how long to do this for, but I do it for a while until I see my dough being a bit aerated, <laughs> I guess. The dough is going to rest for an hour again, uh, and I'm going to do some work. Maybe half an hour. I'm going to, yeah, it'll rest for half an hour. I'm going to study for a while, and then we'll add salt. It's salt time. No, it, oh my god. That's like 14 grams of salt. Okay. That's exactly 6 grams of salt. You did not see me putting salt in the trash. And then what you want to do is you dissolve your salt as good as possible in some water. These are also all techniques I learned from Beijing Wood Babish and Joshua Weissman. So as if you actually want to learn, go watch that video. It's a great video. Now I'm adding this salty water just onto the dough, like so. We're doing the same kind of dimpling as at first. And this is a bit of a scary part, because now the dough kind of... I don't know what the chemistry behind this is, because it's really inter interesting. The dough gets, re gets a really weird texture, it's like it's coming apart. <laughs> so you get from having quite a nice dough to having a dough that's absolutely coming apart. And if you're like me, and you've added too much water, because you wanted your salt to dissolve, Take your dough out and pour out some water, because we're going to take our dough out anyways. We're taking this... Oh my god, it's so wet. We're taking this wet dough and slamming it against the table. This is my favorite part. And immediately you can feel it coming together, like you have this loose dough that's coming apart and <laughs> after you add the salt and then you get a way nicer dough. <laughs> the, you get dough up on your cupboards. <laughs> dough counter cupboards. <laughs> the dough uh, started to get way less sticky so I put it in the bowl and it's going to be in here for an hour. I think with a towel over. It's been an hour and now I'm going to do a set of folds. Uh, in Swedish this is called vila och vika metoden. The resting and fold method. The rest and fold method, I guess. Because you let the dough rest for a while, about half an hour, and then you fold it. And then you let the dough rest again, you fold it, and then you do that a few times, maybe five or six times. And for me it usually depends on how much time I have. <laughs> Today I might do it six times actually. Uh, what's good is to wet your hands before or to just have a bowl of water. And I grab the dough at one end and just fold this over. We will feel it becoming more You will feel it becoming more t taut, maybe. I have now folded the dough six times in ish 30 minute intervals. Uh, when I don't set a timer, it's not very exciting intervals and I also had to like eat dinner and we took a walk so maybe maybe some of them were more like hour intervals but the dough doesn't care honestly and now the dough is kind of jiggly and gassy I guess uh, and I'm going to put it in this but I'm going to do some final steps and put then put it into this bowl uh, it's a proofing basket a bowl it's a proofing basket and um, mine is Boobie shaped, uh, 
ball shaped. <laughs> India sounds so much nicer to say it in French. And we're going to, I am just flouring this. I have quite a sticky dough, so I'm being very generous with this flour, honestly. Are you also experiencing good weather where you are? Because we have had very nice we spring weather with these, actually last like three weeks, honestly. Um, it's great because when the only thing you're allowed to do is take walks, it's like very nice to have great weather. I hope you're having good weather. Before. Uh, <laughs> back to what I'm doing. I'm flowering a work surface bench. And I feel like this dough is just like kind of way too sticky. <laughs> of course nothing goes exactly to plan when I'm doing it on video. I also, I wish I had one of those dough scrapers. I know it's not like a, an extravagant thing to wish for it. Look, this dough is very, should we call it melty, I guess. What I'm going to do is a technique, I know, but I'm going to need more flour than I usually use, so I'm flouring myself as well. Uh, where we stretch and fold the dough in on itself, uh, kind of like before actually, but every corner is folded into the middle and put there. Um, it should stay because the dough is sticky on this side. We'll see. <laughs> and I'm going to flour myself again. Flip it over. And now, this is my favorite thing because it just feels so satisfying. I'm so nice. You take your dough and you go like this. I learned this from a YouTube video. And I can link it down below actually. It's a great YouTube video. It's very quite short and sweet and I don't know, the lady just gives a, a great showing of how to do this technique properly. I'm just, you're kind of folding the dough in, you're folding the dough in under itself and it's just, it feels great, you can feel, <laughs> can feel the dough. I love just feeling the dough, you know. You can let it rest just right here, so it can develop some gluten. You're sensing a theme? And then we're repeating the whole process again. Do, do, do. I actually think it's very, very satisfying to make bread. What? My, what? <laughs> mm, if you've never done it, try it. It doesn't have to be sourdough because maybe sourdough is very scary and intimidating and that's the same word pretty much. Maybe it's not very new beginner friendly, I guess. It's just me who's crazy and like went head f first into the hardest type of bread, I guess. <laughs> um, but it's fun, it's very satisfying to just like get to knead the dough and make something and then when you've done it you feel so accomplished. And it's also like very very relaxing to make a bread. Especially <laughs> breads like these that just take a really long time because you can't rush it and that's like a lot of things in life. You can rush and then you do because you want to finish them and they you're stressing all the time or well i know i i do i am so um yeah sort of it's great to relax Ew. and then i'm just picking it up I'm really dropping it into the bowl. It's not really come together at the bottom, so we're going to fix that. Maybe. Always hard to know if you're fixing things or just making them worse, honestly. This is what it looks like. 
Yeah. I still have this on because it contains advice on how to clean this thing. Oh, it's chicory all right. The bed is in the boom. And the <laughs> no, I don't know if the basket is called a bowl or just shape. It's in the basket. And uh, I'm putting it in the fridge overnight, which is why this is a three day cutter. And I think that's really nice because I'm way too tired to pick a bird. We'll wake up back tomorrow. It's Tuesday and it's a beautiful day. Look at that. We have a French balcony, which I never thought we would actually use, seeing as you can't sit on a French balcony. You know, it's like very tiny. But I'm using it all the time, because when you have a door in the kitchen, you can open it every time the kitchen gets too hot when you're cooking, and it's very useful, actually. Earlier, when I was sitting here studying, a bumblebee flew in. I was like, hi, friend. <laughs> So I'm hoping she'll return. Or he. I don't know how to... I don't know. Uh, it's about 11.30 and it's the third day of our baking process. And uh, I have seen that the bread has risen in the fridge and we're go I put the oven on like several hours ago. <laughs> but then I had to sit down and watch a lecture and time just flew away, you know. The oven is on at like its highest, um, because that's good for the bread, I'm, I've heard, and then you lower the temperature as you go. I also, my bread always needs to be in there for like a really long time, so I'm probably going to put the timer on half an hour, like lower the temperature after 20 minutes or something, and then it's going to have to be in there for like another 20 30 minutes. Yeah, I swear. <laughs> mm, let's do this. We'll see how how structurally intact the bread is because that's my biggest concern right now. I think it might not be very Absolutely awful. You can't tell, so I'm going to show you. <laughs> it's the worst bread. It's very, it's getting very flat, and I also feel like it also flipped when I was getting it out of the basket. <laughs> so I had to flip it over, and it just turned into a mess, and it's kind of sticking. So. <sighs> 